Hi, it's Kate from Marvelous Videos. Today we look at every Lovecraftian monster. Well, horrorheads, today we have an absolute treat in store for you. We will be exploring all the Lovecraftian monsters that you can think of. Howard Phillips Lovecraft, an American author, is now widely regarded as a forerunner of modern horror fiction. Lovecraft was a pioneering horror novelist who impacted and inspired numerous horror-centered artists be they writers, filmmakers, musicians, or painters, despite his contentious nature. Lovecraft's stories are notoriously strange, and he was a master at capturing the terrible atmosphere that pervades his writings. An atmosphere that would draw you in so deep that you felt as if you were there yourself. His literary style is instantly recognisable, and although being repetitious at times, it remains one of the most unique and distinct in the history of horror literature. The phrase Lovecraftian horror refers to a subgenre or style of horror fiction inspired by H.P. Lovecraft's stories. He is also regarded as the father of the cosmic horror subgenre, which he frequently employs in his works. The Dream Cycle, which is about the mythical dreamlands, and the Cthulhu Mythos, which is about a vast mythology of giant creatures, are the two major cycles in which his horror novels are split. Both of these exhibit a vibrant chaos that has terrified readers for over a century. We've decided to visit that chaos in today's video, and give you a list of all the terrible Lovecraftian monsters that have appeared in his story, as well as other stories by other Lovecraftian authors. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. Shogoth. The creature debuted in the book At the Mountains of Madness by H.P. Lovecraft. A Shogoth, like a huge amoeba, is a sentient blob of self-shaping gelatinous flesh. If a Shogoth moulded itself into a sphere, it would be around 15 feet in diameter, but there are larger and smaller variants. A Shogoth can shape itself into whatever organ or shape it requires at the time, yet in its natural state it has a seething profusion of eyeballs, mouths, and pseudopodia. It had the ability to move at amazing speeds when it was discovered at the South Pole. It was like watching a train approach someone who was standing on its tracks. The Shogoth may murder its opponents by surrounding them and creating enough suction to decapitate them. During their uprising, they fought the Elder Things in this manner. They apparently have a nasty, overwhelming odour that totally masks the Elder Things' repulsive odour. The Elder Things bred the Shogoths as animals who serve them for underwater construction. They were great living building machinery because of their capacity to shape their bodies as needed. Despite being meant to be mindless, the Shogoths mutated over the eons and gradually developed consciousness, even becoming rebellious on occasion. They eventually toppled and slaughtered the Elder Things and created their own towns. Their design is actually based on the Elder Things five-pointed symmetry. Some Shogoths survived until the contemporary period, most notably in Antarctica and the deepest portions of the world's oceans, despite their rarity. The Deep Ones, a race of humanoid amphibious beings, are known to work with or use Shogoths, often known as Sea Shogoths. Azathoth. Azathoth is an outer god who is also known as the Blinded Ear God, Nuclear Chaos, the Demon Sultan, the Deep Dark, and the Cold One. Azathoth is impossible to describe, precisely because everyone sees him differently, and he is constantly changing. It's a gigantic, sensitive black hole according to some reports. Azathoth's physical manifestation in the universe has been proved to be continuous at a point in the galaxy's central area, known as Sagittarius A, the supermassive black hole at the Milky Way's heart. In his work, The Dream Quest of Unknown Gaddaf, Lovecraft developed this creature. Albert Wilmarth and Walter Gilman are both shocked at the mere mention of Azathoth's name, which they both read about in the esoteric book, indicating that he is a powerful, malicious influence in the Necronomicon. In Gilman's case, it's the witch Keziah Mason who refers to Azathoth as she pursues his dreams, telling him that he must meet the black man and go with them all to Azathoth's throne, at the heart of ultimate chaos. He must sign the book of Azathoth in his own blood and adopt a new hidden name. 
The fact that he had seen the name Azathoth in the Necronomicon and knew it stood for a primal horror too horrible to describe kept him from going with her. The goats were town people who perform obscene rites involving atrocities on living victims or among its many followers. In Azathoth's conical temple, insects have fled the destruction of their home planet of Shagai, bringing the temple with them across the universe and spreading his influence. Nora, I saw you. I saw you were dead. Lostmith, is he okay? Yes, yes. Cthulhu. Cthulhu is a fictitious godlike entity created by H.P. Lovecraft, the 20th century horror writer. This scary cosmic being first appeared in Lovecraft's short story, The Call of Cthulhu and is characterized as a manifestation of chaos and destruction. This one is obviously the best known out of all of Lovecraft's monsters. Cthulhu has the look of a giant humanoid being with arthropodal and cephalopodic characteristics. He, or rather it, has a man's upper body, but its back is covered with tiny webbed wings and its arms and legs end in clawed digits. Cthulhu's most distinguishing characteristic is its head, which resembles an octopus. The head is largely made up of a big bulbous pulsing sac with multiple writhing tentacles sprouting from where a mouth should be. Cthulhu can grow to be hundreds of meters tall and can change its size and shape at will, ranging from the size of a man to the size of a continent. It's capable of generating whatever number of limbs it desires. Cthulhu is said to have a worldwide cult with its base in Arabia, with followers as far away as Greenland and Louisiana. In China's highlands, there are cult leaders who are supposedly immortal. Some of these cultists describe Cthulhu as a great priest of the Great Old Ones who lived eons before there were any men, and who appeared out of the sky to the newborn world. Cthulhu is a descendant of Yogg-Sothoth, who may have been born on Vul in the 23rd nebula. On the planet Zoth, he mated with Ediar. Gatanathoa, Ithogtha, Zothamog, and Cthulhu are his offspring. He is also supposed to have mated with the being Nialathotep, giving birth to Ilithla. Nialathotep Nialathotep, often known as the Crawling Chaos, is an outer god in the Cthulhu mythos. H.P. Lovecraft created him and he first appeared in the prose poem Nialathotep. He is Azathoth's offspring. Neolathotep also appears in other Lovecraft stories, as well as in the works of other authors and role-playing games based on the Cthulhu mythos. Neolathotep is distinct from the other deities in the mythos in several ways. Most of the outer gods such as Yogg-Sothoth and Azathoth are exiled to the stars, and most of the great old ones such as Cthulhu are asleep and dreaming. Neolathotep, on the other hand, is active and frequently wanders the earth in the appearance of a human being generally a tall, skinny, joyful man. He has a thousand more forms and manifestations, many of which are said to be horrifying and sanity-destroying. In the absence of the other outer gods, Nialathotep serves many cults and manages their affairs. Most outer gods speak weird alien languages, whereas Nialathotep speaks human languages and may easily pass for a human if he so desires. Nialathotep appears to be purposefully deceitful and manipulative, even resorting to propaganda to attain his objectives. He is arguably the most human-like of the Outer Gods in this way. Nialathotep is the Outer Gods messenger, heart, and soul, as well as their immemorial figure of the deputy or messenger of hidden and terrifying forces. He is also Azathoth's servant, and he promptly performs his master's fitful demands. Unlike the other Outer Gods, spreading lunacy is more vital and delightful to Nialathotep than death and destruction. Some believe that he will destroy the human race and even the entire planet. It darted like a stupendous monster of nightmares to the monolith, about which it flung. Dagon. Dagon is a deity who governs the Deep Ones, an amphibious humanoid race that lives in the Earth's waters. He first appears in Lovecraft's short story Dagon and is heavily referenced throughout the Cthulhu mythos. Although both are deities, they are not commonly regarded as the Great Old Ones. They are also known as Father Dagon and the Consort of Mother Hydra. The esoteric Order of Dagon, an Innsmouth-based hidden cult, worships him. Some Deep Ones are said to grow to monstrous proportions in their old age. These people gave rise to the Dagon cult, 
which worships these beasts as deities. They are, in reality, entirely bodily individuals whose advanced age contributes to their enormous stature. There is fossil evidence that the oldest largest of these species grew to be nearly 50 feet tall. Dagon is a massive iteration of the Deep One, who has been described in books since antiquity. A devoted cult of men and the Deep Ones venerate him as a divinity. While it appears to be everlasting, its longevity can be traced to its friendship with the Starspawn, who occasionally chooses formidable specimens of a specific species to preserve, care for, and strengthen for reasons known only to them. Don't confuse the Dagon with the Deep Ones, because there are old Dagon-related statues depicting numerous colossal Deep Ones grappling with whales. Great Old One No two Great Old Ones are exactly alike, despite sharing comparable qualities. They are ancient, powerful creatures whose roots lie deep in the past of the cosmos. Most are colossal monstrosities formed from the very fabric of the universe and are virtually impossible to destroy. They have minds whose thought processes are incomprehensible to humans. They show little to no regard for the consequences of their actions on lesser beings, and they drive anyone who sees their true form insane. Furthermore, the majority of them have the ability to influence the minds of sentient beings even when they're asleep or inert. Initially thought to be just indifferent to the destinies of those unfortunate enough to be in their company, recent writings have revealed that the majority of them are openly antagonistic to the mortal population of the cosmos. In general, the Great Old Ones are restricted to the globe they inhabit, although a handful are capable of extending their reach across the gulf of space to worlds orbiting other stars. The ceremonial services of their various cults can occasionally be of use in this situation. Many people believe that the Great Old Ones have individual affinity to the elements of earth, air, fire, and water. Many of the Great Old Ones are revered as gods by mortal cults, both human and non-human. A Great Old One can use these cults in a variety of ways. Some are dedicated to spreading the Great Old One's power, others want to extend the creature's coven of servants, while yet others simply hope to see their master released from their chains. Yogg-Sothoth Yogg-Sothoth is a cosmic being as well as an outer god. He is the ancestor of Cthulhu, Aster, the Unspeakable, and the Vormi, having been born of the Nameless Mist. He is also Wilbur Waitley's father. Yogg-Sothoth, like many Lovecraftian gods, appears in a variety of stories from the Cthulhu mythos. It first appeared in the case of Charles Dexter Warrow, written by Lovecraft. However, it appears that Yogg-Sothoth reveals itself visually as a mass of glowing spheres, with eyeballs or tendrils in some versions and just spheres in others. It's highly hinted, if not explicably stated, that Yogg-Sothoth is omniscient and trapped outside of the cosmos, which means he can know and see all of space-time at the same time, implying that nothing escapes him. Yogg-Sothoth was reported to have been summoned in one case involving the city of Dunwich for the purpose of impregnating a human lady, who then gave birth to two partially human children. The conjurer was the Waitley family's husband and father, known to stand on a hill in a stone circle with the Necronomicon to summon Yogg-Sothoth from above. It's said that Yogg-Sothoth is familiar with the gate. The gate is Yogg-Sothoth and Yogg-Sothoth is the gate's key and keeper. In Yogg-Sothoth, the past, present, and future are all intertwined. He knows where the Old Ones broke through in the past, and where they will break through in the future. He knows where they have trodden the Earth's fields, where they are treading now, and why no one else can see them as they tread. Nightgaunt This one is quite horrifying because of its grotesque appearance. Nightgaunts are a type of flying creature that inhabit Earth's dreamlands and play an important role in the Dream Cycle series. They have smooth, whale-like skin, long, slender humanoid bodies, curved horns on their head, leather bat-like wings, and a blank expanse of flesh where a face should be. They see Nodens as their lord and master and revere and worship him. Nightgaunts have a fascinating backstory as they are based on creatures that appeared frequently in Lovecraft's nightmares as a boy. They are described by Lovecraft as frightening and uncouth black beings with smooth, oily whale-like surfaces, nasty horns that bent inward toward each other, bat wings that made no sound, horrible prehensile paws, and barbed tails that lashed needlessly and unsettlingly. 
In his dreams, it were more tarrying than anything he had seen or known because they never spoke, laughed, or smiled, having no faces to grin with. Only a suggestive blankness was present where a face should be. They only ever clutched, flew, and tickled. These ones are definitely nightmare fuel. Outer God All outer gods are unique, but they all share some basic characteristics. They are enormously powerful entities that have existed for untold millennia. They have thought processes and personal goals that are completely incomprehensible to mortal minds, and they have physical forms that are enough to drive a man insane. Furthermore, due to their long struggle with the Elder Gods, most are currently imprisoned in some remote region or completely locked out of our plane of existence, despite the fact that they are able to exercise some impact through their enormous psychic skills. While the Elder Gods' objectives are unknown to us, the vast bulk of these celestial beings are inimically opposed to all other life. As a result of this mentality, other races often see the Elder Gods as bad. Azathoth, the blind idiot god, rules over the outer gods and is thought to sit at the centre of the universe. Yuxathoth, his co-ruler, appears by his side, and the two are surrounded by a crowd of their followers who dance for them to the music of a demonic flute. The power of the elder god Starstones makes the outer gods vulnerable, albeit the nature of this weakness has never been revealed. These artefacts are used to confine those who are imprisoned. The outer gods' origins are shrouded in obscurity. Some believe they have existed from the beginning of time, while others believe that they were unleashed by some ancient creature of immense evil. And still, others believe that they originated countless millennia ago in a distant galaxy. Deep One Deep Ones are humanoid in form and are predominantly aquatic in nature. However, they may survive on land indefinitely. They lack hair, have scaly fish-like skin, feathered gills on their necks or upper torsos, and webbed hands and feet that let them navigate beneath the waters. Their heads are supposed to resemble those of frogs or fish, and they have huge, unblinking eyes that provide them with great vision in the ocean's depths. Deep ones are functionally immortal, meaning they will never die unless they are subjected to violence or an accident. Furthermore, for unexplained reasons, certain deep ones will continue to expand over the course of their lifetimes and become truly monstrous beings. While some unsubstantiated tales claim that the deep ones arrived on Earth many years ago from a distant star system, what is known is that they have resided on this planet as a species with advanced technology since long before mankind learnt to walk upright and use tools. Little is known about the Deep One's social practices, though their cities have been remarked to have a certain grandeur that some have compared them to the edifices created by the Roman Empire in ages past. Deep Ones, as marine animals, prefer to construct their cities on the ocean floor, away from the prying eyes of land-dwelling species. They have also been known to breed Shogoths for construction purposes. Rantagoth. If critters and insects give you the creeps, then this one is definitely not for you. Rantagoth is an insectoid amphibious god, one of the Great Old Ones who resembles a 15-foot jellyfish and is important to the return of the Great Old Ones. He lived in Yugoth's warm oceans until arriving on Earth three million years ago, during the Pliocene where he inhabited an area of Alaska, before going into a trance-like sleep. Rantagoth was the last of the Great Old Ones to sleep, and he should be the first to awaken. His body was discovered by George Rogers and moved to a museum in London in 1926. It was then lost until it was discovered in Sheffield, UK in the 1980s, and then in America in the 1990s by pre-human cannibal Nofkas. Few humans are aware of it today. The god is shaped like a giant bug, with a massive barrel-shaped trunk, six limbs that finish in claw-like pincers, and an almost spherical head covered in hair-like filaments or antennae a nose that is tentacle-shaped, and three small protruding eyes. This monster first appeared in H.P. Lovecraft's The Horror in the Museum. Do you feel something crawling on your skin? Yeeg. First, we had an insect god, and now we have a snake god. Yeeg, also known as the snake god or the father of serpents, is a great old one from H.P. Lovecraft's Cthulhu Mythos. Yeeg is a deity of snakes and serpents all across the world, manifesting as a huge snake with human arms, or sometimes as a reptile humanoid figure. He has a strong attachment to his children, and he awakens every fall to punish those who injure them. He accomplishes this by either transforming them into serpents or serpent-like wretches, or by sending other snakes to kill them while they sleep. 
There are many stories of Yig exacting revenge on humans who harm or kill snakes, by making them hallucinate and kill their own loved ones as repentance. Yig and his then-mate Kotlaku once governed the Red Cavern of Yoth, beneath the subterranean continent of Kanyan. There, the two were worshipped as gods by the Serpent Men, the dwellers of Yoth. This arrangement came to an end when the Serpent Men switched their worship to Sathogua, and the great Yig cursed them. Yig is also supposed to be the deity behind the traditions of Kukulkan and Quetzalcoatl, which are revered by local tribes in Central and South America. Yig is also easily angered, yet he's simple to please as long as no harm is done to his children, the snakes. A Native American ethnologist undertook significant research on the snake tradition from Guatemala to Oklahoma in the early 1920s. Yik, he said, was the sinister counterpart to the more benevolent Quetzalcoatl and Kukulkan. This creature first appeared in Zelia Bishop and H.P. Lovecraft's 1929 novel The Curse of Yi. Migo The Migo are a species of aliens from the planet Yugoth. They are described as flying monsters with enormous claws and antennae covering their heads. The Migo are a scientifically and technologically advanced breed, with an in-depth understanding of surgical methods and neurobiology. Migo are pink, fungoid crustaceans with a convoluted ellipsoid composed of pyramidal, fleshy rings and covered with antennae where a head would normally be. They're around 1.5 meters long and have several limbs joined in pairs on their crustacean-like bodies. They also have a pair of bat-shaped, membranous wings that they utilize to fly through the ether of space. The wings don't work effectively on Earth. Some other races in Lovecraft's narrative have wings like this one, implying that this is a common form of interplanetary travel. The Migo are fundamentally alien to earthly existence. Their bodies, according to two descriptions in the original short story, are made of a type of stuff that doesn't normally arise on Earth. Surprisingly, they don't appear in photographs because the material from which they are constructed reflects light differently. They are, nevertheless, described as fungal in terms of biology, despite the fact that their exterior is extremely similar to that of a crab. Surprisingly, they can enter a state of suspended animation until softened and warmed by the sun or another heat source. They typically communicate by changing the colour of their heads, but they can also speak human language. They may also modify their bodies so that they can speak. When they talk, though, a hum can be heard, and their voice sounds really frightening. Elder Thing The Elder Things are a fictional alien species invented by H.P. Lovecraft that first appear in his 1936 novel At the Mountains of Madness. Lovecraft's short works, The Dreams in the Witch House and The Shadow Out of Time, contain additional references to the Old Ones. The Elder Things were the first alien species to arrive on Earth, occupying it approximately one billion years ago. They were around six feet tall and resembled a giant oval-shaped barrel with starfish-like appendages at both ends. They had five eyes, five eating tubes, and prismatic cilia for seeing in the dark. The lower appendage had five limbs. The aliens also had five sets of tentacles and five leathery retractable wings. The Elder Thing's bodies were extremely strong, able to survive the pressures of the deepest ocean and the harsh vacuum of space. The Elder Things established massive cities on Earth, both underwater and on dry land. They may have been responsible for the appearance of the first living forms on Earth, such as the creature known as Ubo Sathla. They genetically modified the deadly Shogoths to serve as their all-purpose slave race. However, the Shogoths eventually rebelled, hastening the deterioration and the eventual demise of their civilization. They are known to have fought Cthulhu, the great race of Yith, and the Migo. Despite these fights, it was the planet's steady freezing during the Ice Age that sealed their fate. They would have no more dealings with the outside world after retreating to their deep sea cities. Early A. This one is not a monster, but the abode of the most well-known Lovecraftian creation, Cthulhu. The reason why this one is on our list is because it's tough for mortals to gaze upon this structure, and we'll tell you why. Cthulhu's former home and current prison is Earlier, the most powerful of the Great Old Ones. It's frequently mentioned but never seen in H.P. Lovecraft's Cthulhu Mythos. Earlier, a half-submerged fortress city in the middle of the South Pacific, is covered in Cyclopean stonework that mortals find unpleasant to gaze at. This could be owing to Earlier's nature, as it's suspected of existing on not only our dimension, but on numerous planes at the same time many of which do not comply to the laws of physics as we know them. 
Erlier, formerly the powerful Cthulhu's palace, became the creature's prison, after the Great Old Ones were defeated in their struggle against the Elder Gods. He's remained in prison there since then, sleeping the sleep of the dead, in the hope that one day his disciples would be able to release him. While mortals have visited Erlier throughout the ages, the only recorded instance of its existence comes from one Francis Wayland Thurston, who led an expedition to the island. The expedition was a failure, and all subsequent attempts to locate Erlier failed, implying that it had either been relocated or sunk beneath the waves to avoid detection. Nodens Nodens, also known as the Lord of the Great Abyss, is a heavenly being who appears in H.P. Lovecraft's Cthulhu Mythos as one of the Elder Gods. Nodens appears as an ancient but powerful human male, with a flowing white beard and hair. He's generally seen at the helm of his huge hunting chariot, a device made from a colossal seashell and drawn by monsters from Earth's legendary past. Nodens enjoys hunting the servants of the Great Old Ones and the Outer God Nialathotep, not because he wants to do good, but because these beings provide the best fun. He's believed to enjoy pursuing Shantaks in particular. Nodens has been known to assist these lesser beings on occasion, especially if doing so would hinder plans and cause irritation to one of the great old ones, known as Neolathotep. Interestingly, the notion of Nodens, as well as his name, are derived from an old Celtic deity, who was also a hunter's god. Benuthan. As humans, we always fear the unknown. Benuthan, also known as the Soul Chilling Ice God, is a great old one and the twin brother of the Rutradiel in H.P. Lovecraft's Cthulhu Mythos. Almost nothing is known about Benuthan, though it has been described as a giant humanoid creature with blue tinged skin made of ice. Wherever it goes, a terrible, unearthly storm follows, earning Benuthan its moniker. We can only imagine the godly power this one possesses because while there's not that much information, the little information that we do have makes Benuthan seem formidable, and its ability to control the weather is definitely frightening. Bokrug Bokrug, the Great Water Lizard, is a great old one from the Cthulhu Mythos, created by H.P. Lovecraft. According to legend, during the celebrations of the 1000th anniversary of the fall of Ib, a peculiar darkness began to descend from the moon while a green fog rose up from the lake's surface to meet it. The men of Sarnath began to flee their city after seeing creatures that resembled the Thunar that devastated their civilization. When the other men mustered the bravery to hunt out Sarnath many years later, they discovered nothing. All that remained was an old, weed-encrusted statue. Out of dread, these men returned the statue to their own city and began to worship Bokrug. H.P. Lovecraft's The Doom That Came to Sarnath included the first and only appearance of Bokrug. Bokrug is the lake-dwelling god of the semi-amphibious Thunhar, also known as the Voiceless Ones of Ib Imnar. The god rests beneath the placid waters of a lake that separates Ib from the city of Sarnath. The mighty deity roused when the humans of Sarnath murdered the people of Ib and took the god's idol. Each year following that, unusual waves were said to disrupt the normally peaceful lake until the Voiceless Ones reclaimed it. Bokrug is a great old one as well. Formless Spawn The Formless Spawn are entities from the Cthulhu Mythos. The Formless Spawn's origins are unknown. However, they are implied to be an alien species in At the Mountains of Madness, possibly traveling to this world with their master. Another tale claims they were conceived by the great old one Staflokla. However, which version is correct is unknown. Formless spawn are found in the service of Sathogua, living in specially built basins in the Great Old One's temples, waiting for anybody who comes to desecrate these vile places. Formless spawns are polymorphic beings, formed of black ichor that resemble amorphous ooze. They are exceedingly tough and difficult to dispatch. Like Shogoths, they may shapeshift to take numerous forms and shape appendages to fit their purposes in order to carry out their master's orders and assault their prey in practically any way imaginable. They are incredibly flexible and plastic and can enter a room via even the smallest of cracks. They attack by stomping, biting, or crushing their prey with their grasp. The entry and formless spawn in the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game also indicates that they're strongly acidic and may disintegrate human flesh with just a mild touch. They are truly horrifying to look at because they are tough to be fathomed as creatures in the first place, rather looking like a malevolent shadow that will kill you. Dimensional Shambler Dimensional Shamblers, also known as the Hunters from Beyond, are a species of alien beings who originate on a plane very different from our own. They first appear in H.P. Lovecraft's Cthulhu Mythos. 
Shamblers are hunched humanoid monstrosities with leathery grey skin, yellow slit-like eyes and long fangs. They typically adopt a stooped semi-simian posture, with their overlong arms dragging across the ground, capped with a pair of gigantic and brutally pointed claws. Although they look corporeal, their dimension-hopping nature means that they have no actual physical form on Earth, which makes defeating a shambler using traditional techniques extremely difficult, if not impossible. Shamblers come from a dimension lower than ours, depicted as a long murky oozing plain beneath the heavens, where the vapours of hell writhe like a million ghostly deformed dragons. Shamblers can move between planes of reality in the spur of a moment, but how they choose their location is unknown. It is known, however, that certain arcane rituals may be utilised to summon one and tie it to the summoner's will. Once manifested, shamblers will choose or be assigned a victim to pursue, performing short teleporting dimensional hops to close the space between them, while appearing to grasp their prey. Although they appear to grasp their victim, they actually use a type of mental control to entangle them, which can be resisted by those with a strong will. Whatever you do, avoid getting entangled in their psychic web. Dreamlands this is the second place featured on our list because of how unfathomable it is to regular humans. The Dreamlands, a huge continent with its own other dimension, serves as the backdrop for many of the stories in H.P. Lovecraft's Cthulhu Mythos. The Dreamlands, created from and sustained by the very stuff of dreams, have a topography as diverse as that of Earth. In fact, anything that can be dreamed of by men can be willed into existence here. It can, however, be broadly divided into six components. The Rugged North, which includes the Leng Plateau. The East is home to Selephus, the Great City. The Great Southern Sea dominates the South, which is home to the island city of Oriab. Another desert, but also the city of Ulthar, lies to the West. Fifthly, there's the Moon, which is hollow and home to a bizarre race called the Moon Beasts. The Underworld is a monster-infested environment. While there are far too many Dreamlanders to name, it should be noted that the vast majority of them appear to be human. Indeed, many mortals have opted to dwell in the Dreamlands, abandoning all ties to the waking world in search of a better life. The Dreamlands are also home to a great variety of unusual and frequently hostile beings, though it should be noted that despite their capacity to shift between realities on the fly, the Great Old Ones and the Outer Gods have found it incredibly difficult to obtain admission into this realm. Shubnagurath. Shubnagurath, also known as the Black Goat of the Woods with a Thousand Young, is a deity in H.P. Lovecraft's Cthulhu Mythos. The entity is often referred to as the Black Ram of the Forest with a Thousand Ewes, adding a masculine gender to what is commonly regarded to be a feminine entity. Shubnagurath is named for the first time in Lovecraft's revised story The Last Test. She is never described in Lovecraft's literature, but is frequently mentioned or invoked in incantations. Other Mythos authors, such as August Derleth, Robert Bloch and Ramsay Campbell, were responsible for the majority of her development as a literary personality. Shubnaguruth was classed as a Great Old One by August Derleth, although she is classified as an Outer God in the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. In turn, the Cthulhu Tech role-playing game has returned to Derleth's designation of Shubnaguruth as a Great Old One. She is a perverted fertility deity that appears as a massive hazy mass with black tentacles, slime dripping mouths and short writhing goat legs. Small creatures are spat forth either to be reabsorbed into the miasmatic form or to flee to some other horrific life. Spider of Leng The Spiders of Leng, sometimes known as the Leng Spiders, are creatures from H.P. Lovecraft's Cthulhu Mythos. Look away if you're afraid of spiders, because this will definitely trigger your arachnophobia. They are purple arachnids that resemble earthly spiders, but on a far bigger scale. The smallest spiders of Leng are the size of a Shetland pony, while larger specimens tower over an elephant. Feeling queasy yet? They have significantly more intellect than conventional creatures, yet they are not immune to cannibalization by other Leng spiders. While they can spin webs to paralyze their victims, they also have a powerful poisonous bite and the ability to climb sheer surfaces, just like their waking world counterparts. Ages ago, the spiders ruled the entire plateau of Leng in the Dreamlands, until defeat in a long conflict with the men of Leng forced them to forsake much of their homeland and withdraw to the strange lands of the mountains and valleys. They still live there, ready to prey on any creature foolish or unwary enough to wander into their realm. 
Hydra or Mother Hydra. Mother Hydra is a massive humanoid entity with a fish-like face, flapping gills, and Piscean skin that is said to resemble a colossal deep one. She, Father Dagon, and the Great Cthulhu form the Holy Trinity of the Deep Ones. The three creatures are venerated as gods by the aquatic race. There is great controversy over whether Mother Hydra is a great old one or simply a hugely expanded deep one, given that some deep ones continue to grow as they age. It doesn't make her any less terrifying actually. In fact, it should be noted that Cthulhu has entrusted Hydra and her partner Dagon with the supervision of his daughter Cthulhu. This is a duty they carry out beneath the North Atlantic, in one of the deep one's vast submarine cities. During Project X in March 1980, Mother Hydra was one of the Wilmar Foundation's objectives the plan was eventually unsuccessful, and she, Father Dagon, and Cthulhu were able to escape the partial devastation of the Deep One city outside Innsmouth Harbour. She continues to watch over Cthulhu and protect her. Dunwich Horror The Dunwich Horror, real name Yogg Waitley, is a creature from H.P. Lovecraft's Cthulhu Mythos. The Dunwich Horror first appeared in the short story of the same name, which is widely regarded as one of Lovecraft's foundational works. Although normally invisible to the naked sight, the Dunwich Horror might be made visible by using an arcane powder, whose recipe can be found in the ancient Book of Evil, known as the Necronomicon. Its true appearance was so foreign to the mortal mind that simply seeing it was enough to drive the spectator insane. It was known to be a beast of colossal proportions, easily capable of swallowing many cattle, or for that matter, people in a single sitting. It was also known to leave a dark, vicious substance in its wake wherever it went. The horror was born in secret to the malformed albino lady, Lavinia Whateley, in the Dunwich Township, and his father was none other than the outer god, Yogg-Sothoth who planned on utilising his offspring as a portal to the mundane world. It was kept hidden away in the Waitley farmhouse and nourished on cattle by its mother and grandfather until the former inexplicably vanished and the latter died. It was thereafter cared for by its brother Wilbur, who was killed while attempting to steal a copy of the Necronomicon from Miskatonic University in order to call Yogg-Sothoth off. After this, it went on a rampage with no one to look after it. Shithak. Shithak, also known as Kashax or Zishaik, is a great old one from H.P. Lovecraft's Cthulhu Mythos. Shithak is barely known, but according to the ancient documents known as the Parchments of Nom, she married with Sathogua on the planet of Yaksh, now known as Neptune, and gave birth to the great old one, Zvilpogua. Her whereabouts and present activities are unknown. Clark Ashton Smith created Shathak but did not expand on it. Some elements were connected by Lawrence J. Cornford. Its appearance, on the other hand, is extremely scary, being a gigantic tentacle monster. The great old ones are, in general, a race which is quite formidable. You wouldn't want to be targeted by them or get entangled in their affairs. Zvilpogua. Zvilpogua, also known as Osidakiwa, the Star Beast, or the Feaster from the Stars, is a great old one from H.P. Lovecraft's Cthulhu Mythos. Zvilpogua usually takes the form of a huge bipedal toad, with no arms but a pair of leathery wings. It had a lengthy neck and a face covered in thick, grabbing tentacles, according to legend. This dreaded monster is mentioned in the occult book of evil sorceries done in New England of demons in no human shape. Svilpogua is capable of generating an avatar known as the Star Beast, which these people periodically summoned. However, this was only done in the most desperate of circumstances, because once summoned, the beast would only return to the sky when it wanted. It's uncertain what shape this avatar took. Svilpogua is thought to have been born on the planet Yaksh, to the great old ones Sathogua and Shathok, and now lives on the planet Yantram, which orbits the star Algol in the constellation Perseus. Clark Ashton Smith coined the name Zvilpogua, but it was never developed. In The Lurker at the Threshold, August Darleth created Zvilpogua from an unfinished piece by H.P. Lovecraft. Gatanathoa, the firstborn of Cthulhu and EDR, and sibling of Ithogtha, Zothamog, and Cthulhu, Gatanathoa is an enormous, amorphous, godlike being whose appearance is so hideous that anyone who looks upon it, or even an image of it, will be instantly immobilized, turned into what amounts to a living mummy, with their skin assuming a leathery texture and their internal organs preserved for all time. Anyone who suffers from this fate will be utterly paralyzed while remaining fully cognizant and aware. Only the annihilation of the brain will release this wretched soul from its anguish. Gatanathoa, spawned by Cthulhu and EDR on the planet Zoth, was taken to Earth a millennia ago by an ancient alien species who entombed it beneath Mount Yadithgo on the lost continent of Mu, which now lies at the bottom of the 
Pacific Ocean. It has remained in servitude ever since, worshipped first by the Lyoga and subsequently by the humans who resettled on Mu. Many have attempted to destroy Katanathoa over the millennia. Teog, the high priest of Shubnigurith, developed a magical scroll to defend himself from the Dark God's terrifying appearance in the Year of the Red Moon. The Year of the Red Moon took place in 173,148 BC. This endeavour doomed him to a horrific death when Katanathoa's own priest covertly replaced the artifact with a forgery. Gloon. Gloon is also known as the Corrupter of Flesh, the Master of the Temple, and Gloon. It's a great old one who appears in H.P. Lovecraft's Cthulhu Mythos. Gloon's real look is that of a leathery, bloated slug, with large flaps of skin hanging from its body. Despite being imprisoned by powerful sorcery on the lost continent of Atlantis for a long time, Gloon is occasionally able to manifest its true form through its avatars. Even those who simply touch the diminutive statues will experience strange dreams of psychological ruins beneath the sea. Those affected by such dreams have an overwhelming desire to find the ruins, to the point of drowning themselves in the process. Gloon is said to be the custodian of a vast temple in Atlantis that serves as a portal to another dimension, though the contents of this realm are unknown. Although there are no human worshippers of Gloon in the present, he appears to have a following among aquatic species, with dolphins in particular showing a penchant for following his statues. His appearance is largely depicted as somewhat of a modern Greek god statue, but don't be fooled by that. Yugoth. The third place we are featuring in our list is no less than a monster since it has the capability to drive humans insane. Yugoth, sometimes known as Ekoth, is a planet from H.P. Lovecraft's Cthulhu Mythos. While some sources claim Yugoth is the planet Pluto, others claim it's a massive trans-Neptunian globe twice the size of Jupiter. Whatever the reality is, Yugoth is located in the outskirts of our solar system. Yugoth, according to Glarkey's revelations, was the birthplace of a now extinct species of alien whose abandoned cities of black stone and emerald pyramids still litter the frigid earth. Instead of water, the planet is partially covered in oceans and rivers of a heated black tar-like substance. Its surface is battered by ferocious winds and the overall aspect of the dark world is enough to drive a man insane. Post the extinction of the original Yugothians, a variety of creatures have dwelt there, including the outer god Kuxukluth and his family, but all but Kuxukluth have since left. The extraterrestrial Migo have also created a colony on Yugoth, establishing their city on the rim of the hole inhabited by the Outer God, which means that they must evacuate on a regular basis when Kuxukluth rises its eldritch head to the surface. Nofka. Nofka looks like an extraordinarily huge member of the Nofka race, spawned by the great old one of Fumzar. Indeed, he may be the species progenitor. It's described as a six-legged polar bear with vicious claws, long matted white hair, and a single huge horn resembling that of a narwhal. Nofka has been identified as a cannibalistic entity. Nofka is currently imprisoned beneath the cold surface of Hyperborea, which encompasses Greenland in our time. It's unknown how he got there, though it's probable that he was trapped when Afumzar and Ithakwa carried out their partially successful plan to freeze the planet. Blizzard summoning and temperature reduction abilities are among their many powers. They are linked to Rantagoth, whom they appear to worship, and possibly Ithakwa, Zar, and Leogor. They are described in early records, such as the Book of Ebon, as a race of vicious cannibals, expelled from Lamar by humans and the Vormis. It later appears as a lone creature commonly referred to as the Hairy Thing, and is confused with Rantagoth. Although hairy reptiles are uncommon, some writings refer to them as reptilian. It's currently on the verge of extinction. The Nopka are either air or water creatures. Wilbur Waitley. Wilbur Waitley was a Cthulhu Mythos demi-human being created by H.P. Lovecraft. Wilbur, who was almost nine feet tall and still growing at the time of his death, wore enormous garments to conceal his rapidly deteriorating body. Although his hands and face were human-like, the skin on his upper body was scaled like that of a reptile, with crocodilian-like armour plating across the chest. His skin was covered in a thick covering of black fur and a forest of greenish-grey appendages with red rims, sucking mouths that spring from his abdomen. Wilbur had what seemed to be a rudimentary eye on each of his hips, and where some animals have a tail, Wilbur had a weird trunk-like protrusion, resembling an immature throat. He possessed dinosaur-like legs that ended in misshapen clawed hooves, and instead of blood, he had filthy, sticky, greenish-yellow ichor. Wilbur, the son of Lavinia Waitley and the outer god Yogg-Sothoth, grew up swiftly. He started talking 
talking at 11 months and appeared as a 15 year old boy at the age of four and a half. Wilbur was homeschooled by his grandfather for the first few years of his childhood because he was disliked by the other children of Dunwich and was aggressively attacked by their dogs. There, his grandfather, known locally as Wizard Waitley, taught him all sorts of evil magic, as well as the worship and summoning of banned beings. Wilbur cared for his brother, the Dunwich Terror, on his own for years following the deaths of his mother and grandfather, but he also pursued his studies in the black arts. Gobbergeg. Gobbergeg, also known as the Twice Invoked and the Moon Ladder, is a great old one from the Cthulhu mythos. While little is known about the dreaded Gobbergeg, what is known is that it appears as a huge column of changing, pulsating, eldritch flesh, with a single baleful eye at the tip of its tentacle-like body. When it appears, tremendous earthquakes damage the surrounding areas, and it's reported to be capable of causing entire universes to implode simply by this existence. To make matters worse, when Gobbergeg is called, it it literally drags up the entire continent as it ascends skyward, causing the entire globe to collapse on itself. Sandy Peterson was the one who built on Lovecraft's hazy description of the moon ladder and other visions. <laughs> Hasta, sometimes known as the King in Yellow, is a hypothetical cosmic entity, initially introduced in Ambrose Bierce's short story Hatter the Shepherd, and developed on by Robert W. Chambers, H.P. Lovecraft, and August Darleth. He was first portrayed as a loving shepherd god. The word Hasta is used to denote numerous elements, including character and setting in Chambers's The King in Yellow, a collection of horror stories. Hasta was mentioned in Lovecraft's The Whisper in Darkness, along with many other deities and locations from from his own mythology, such as Cthulhu. Lovecraft's buddy, August Derleth, transformed Hasta into a great old one, half-brother to Cthulhu and spawn of Yogg-Sothoth, who lives in Carcosa. Hasta and Cthulhu were also pitted against each other in Derleth. Hound of Tindalos Frank Belknap Long developed the Hounds of Tindalos, which August Derleth eventually incorporated into the Cthulhu mythos. It's uncertain if the Hounds naturally survived the ages to the present day, or whether it was their ability to span great expanses of time and space that allowed them to do so. They originated in the Earth's remote past, when other life was yet to grow beyond the single-cell organism level. In either instance, they are dominated by the most powerful member of their kind, a mighty entity known as Mirthra, in the contemporary age. Although their actual form is unknown, intergalactic time traveller Titus Crow described them as having the appearance of bat-like rags, while other sources indicate that they have lengthy probiosis to drain their prey's bodily fluids and continually spew a horrible blue ichor. Despite being called the Hounds of Tindalos, the name refers to the creature's behaviour more than any similarity to a canine. Hounds are hunters who seek an unexplainable something in humans, and once they detect the smell of a man, generally the trail of the time traveller, the creature creatures will track their victims across time and space to feed. To that end, hounds can manifest themselves through sharp corners. This is due to the fact that whereas most life inhabit the curves of time, hounds dwell in the angles. Hunting Horror The hunting horrors are enormous monsters that resemble gigantic annelids or serpents. They also have a massive pair of bat or dragon-like wings with a rubbery texture, curiously malformed heads and twisted appendages that finish in vicious talons. Their bodily shapes are supposed to alter and change all the time, making it impossible to focus on the creature as a whole. The horrors who serve Neolathotep as attack dogs have a great antipathy to light in all its manifestations. In fact, a strong enough blast of light can turn one into ash. However, that doesn't mean that they aren't formidable foes, especially for humans. Innsmouth this one isn't a monster, but one of the most popular places featured in all of Lovecraftian lore. Innsmouth, Massachusetts is a town that has been significantly urbanised despite its lack of human population. It's located in a wide coastal bay somewhere in Essex County. The place gives off an image of desolation and decay, with many of its large wooden structures abandoned to rot over time. Despite the fact that vast areas of Innsmouth were destroyed in the first half of the 20th century, it nevertheless appears to resemble the slums of 18th century. London. Recent development in Innsmouth would suggest that it's experiencing some urban revitalisation, albeit who or what is behind these new projects is unknown. Yet, visitors in the town have always felt like they were intruding upon something. While many of the townships on Massachusetts shore face the same difficulties as Innsmouth, Obed was certain that this should not happen to his. Based on the habits of certain degenerate Polynesian islanders, with whom he had previously conducted trade, Obed formed a religion through which he made contact with the 
oceanic monstrosities known as the Deep Ones. He discovered that the Deep Ones were always looking to expand their sphere of influence, so he struck a deal with them, Innsmouth's prosperity in exchange for bountiful catches of fish and exotic gold jewellery. The town would supply a portion of its members as breeding supply to mate with the Deep Ones. These turned into hybrids and finally left Innsmouth to go live under the sea. Venus. Another Lovecraftian place that is beyond human imagination is a planet called Venus. No, it's not the regular one in our solar system, but it's one inhabited by primitive humanoid lizard men. Venus, the second planet from the sun, appears in H.P. Lovecraft's short novel In the Walls of Eryx. Unlike the real Venus, Lovecraft's Venus is a lush jungle planet, with a tropical climate and an atmosphere that is almost deadly to humans, but not dangerous enough to necessitate a hermetically sealed spacesuit. Because of crystal orbs that may be used as a source of electrical energy, the planet was chosen as a mining world. These orbs are fiercely defended by the planet's native people, a race of primitive lizard men who believe the crystals have religious significance. Eryx, often known as a Rensian Highland, is the setting of the story. Its single known feature is an invisible maze, which is thought to have been employed as a trap for human crystal miners by the lizard men, due to the crystal that lies in its centre. Shigai. Shigai, sometimes known as Chigai, was a planet in H.P. Lovecraft's Cthulhu mythos. Shigai, the former homeworld of the alien species known as the Shan, orbited a binary system made of twin emerald stars, considered to be situated somewhere in the Andromeda galaxy. Originally inhabited by the spacefaring insects of Shigai, this once proud world was destroyed around 800 years ago by unknown means. It's suspected that the nearby passage of the outer Gorgroth, possibly under the discretion of the alien Migo for for unknown reasons, bombarded Shagai into oblivion with its crimson radiation. Even if Garoth had not flown by the planet, the great old one known as the worm that gnaws in the night was already eating Shagai from the inside out. The planet was doomed anyway. This one is another planet where human existence is absolutely unfathomable, and monsters roam free. This brings us to the end of our massive list of Lovecraftian monsters. Which one sent shivers down your spine? If you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks!